Becoming a king is a recovered map to an ancient path of becoming the kind of man, the kind of king in whom God can gladly entrust the care of his kingdom. In Genesis, God pulls back the curtain. He lets us in on one of his most audacious plans. After his wildly creative work is done, he hands it all over, all of creation, to Adam and Eve like a wedding gift, and he invites them to rule. Right there in Genesis, God says, let us make men and women in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals. In Waking the Dead, John Eldridge writes that we were intended to exercise a fierce mastery over our domain. Like a skipper runs a ship, like a foreman runs a ranch, better said, like a king rules a kingdom. We were meant to govern, to rule as kings and queens, as the giant oak is hidden in the seed of the acorn. The intention of God for a king to rule a kingdom is seeded in the heart of a man. Desire reveals design, and design reveals destiny. However, about any glance at the headlines will tell a far different story. We must pause and ask the question, what's gone wrong in the hearts of men? We tend to think problems are external, like a broken boss, or a broken mower, or a broken government. But often, it's the external problems that are meant to be a window, a treasure trail, to the internal condition in the soul of a man. Mike Mason said it so well when he said, the heart of a man is like a densely populated city. Nothing can be built in its heart without something else being torn down. In order for us to recover our strength and recover our joy as men, we are in need of excavation. We are in need of reconstruction. Dallas Willard says it this way, that the primary work of God is finding men in whom he can entrust his power. And the story of most men is being entrusted with power and it bringing harm to themselves and those under their care. Perhaps a more vulnerable question than what's gone wrong with men being entrusted with power is this, what's gone adrift in my own masculine soul? I remember recently, more recently than I'd like to admit, I was going through some hard times and I wanted to share them with my wife. And I asked Sherry if she'd go to the bedroom so we could have a chat. When I showed up at the bedroom, she was rather stiff and I noticed it. And when I sat down, I said, Sherry, help me understand, how are you feeling right now? And she paused and responded with love and courage and vulnerability and said, Morgan, I'm bracing myself. I'm getting ready to hear what I did do that I shouldn't have done and what I didn't do that I should have done. Friends, just yet again, a moment like that, the grief as a man of missing the mark. What if today we found ourselves only part way in a story, what if the primary mission God was up to was to restore our heart and the whole person as a man? You see, we all have a kingdom and a realm or a domain which has been entrusted to our care. It's where we have say. It's where what we want done is done. You can think of simple choices, beginning with things like what I chose to wear today and what I had for breakfast. Think of it as beginning with our masculine soul, extending to include our bodies, our choices, our mind, our imagination. And then it grows from there in increasing measures. Our kingdom begins to include other people, responsibilities and portions of God's kingdom that he has entrusted to us. And so a question for you and for me is how is your kingdom? What are the state of things? What is the condition of your kingdom in this hour?